And welcome back here in the Northwoods. My name is Mitch. We're out here in the patio again. We're getting started to continue trenching for our downspout. I've got my laser level here with me. Uh, now a quick intro to what I did to establish my grades for this downspout line is I took my laser level, I left it in one spot, established a kind of a, a, a 100 elevation per se, and then surveyed every 10 feet the line of where my downspout four inch PVC is gonna be run under the ground. Uh, took it to Excel, kind of figure out what kind of grades I wanted and then calculated some elevations, uh, what I need to measure on the laser level here. So I'm gonna use the laser level and my shovel and continue trenching out uh, the line for the downspout four inch PVC and get that to proper grade. And then we'll work to start getting that downspout installed. So stick around while we get working on that. And um, later on in this video, I think we're gonna probably get working on the drain tile that I wanna install. And then also we got gravel coming later this week. So we'll see where the video ends up as far as lengthwise, uh, but we got a lot of work to do and no time to do it. So here we go. All right, so a quick overview. I got my laser level sitting here. Uh, it's been there for about three days now, hasn't moved and on the ground, I measured every 10 feet and I put a mark so that I know exactly where I'm at. Um, right here is actually, right in this area is actually 60 feet. And then we got seven for 70 and so on and so forth. Uh, so I used those marks, used my laser level to survey the existing ground. And now I have established elevations or cut elevations I need to target at each of those different spots. And I actually interpolated in between uh, for the five foot marks as well to kind of get it easier when I'm cutting in this trench. Now it's probably a little more scientific slash engineering than you probably need on something like this. Make sure the water slope goes downhill and that's about it. But I'm an engineer, that's what I do. So I overkill it. So we'll start um, checking my spots. We'll start here at 50 and We'll take the shovel and cut down our grade and go 55 and just go down the line. Basically, I've got it set to what I need, 5.47. Uh, we can see we're a little, this footprint from a dog is perfect. We've got to come up a little bit, down a little bit. So we're really close here in this spot. I'll just get the shovel, clean it out a little bit, get this drain tile out of here and go from there. Now I did have to do a little bit extra digging here. Uh, we got a line that comes across right here. Uh, I think there's probably number two aluminum runs all the way out to the shop for 50 amp service out there and then also I've got a water line that runs right here that uh, was used is going out to our garden to feed the water out there so I had to do last night a little bit extra digging to get that water those items out of the way Which is a sweaty mess, but good. I make sure my stuff is straight here. of a bubble that's good that's what we're looking for
you doing? I can see it going through right there. And there's no water backing up this way. Oh, now you got your balls, huh? All right, we got the downspout buried and installed. You can see I used a flexible connector from the downspout here and to be able to attach there and it is just sitting inside of the four inch pipe here. I actually bought a uh, downspout connector adapter that goes supposed to go on top of this four, four inch sewer and drain pipe but because of this flexible it just actually just inserts right in that pipe so I'm not going to use that adapter. My thought process is here if, if for some reason this downspout is plugged or if it's frozen, um, I don't think it'll get frozen just because of our slope. Uh, the watering will drain out fast and then the snow, that, the amount of snow that we get, it doesn't really, the ground doesn't really freeze when the snow is covering it. So I don't think this will freeze up, but we'll see. But if I ever need to remove this and bypass the buried pipe, I will be able to by just pulling this out like this and then connecting it into a uh, corrugated p uh, pipe and running it wherever I need to. So I figure that's a good workaround if I ever need to. But we have it running this way, it's buried, 45 degree angle, made sure it's all sloping downhill and I've got it buried all the way down into the woods there. And then right by Luca Lane here is a clean out I put in there. Um, just, just because it'll be in the landscaping rocks and I just wanted to make sure we have a spot for cleaning out just in case we ever needed to get in there. And, um, in case we ever needed to get in there and check for or fix any plugs or anything like that. And then right here is another pipe. I gotta get a cover on it for now. My ultimate plan is to connect that downspout over there into this pipe here and biggest work right now is making sure that that drainage was okay. So we're all done with this. It's all buried, although Luca looks like he's going to try and dig it back up now. Uh, next step now is to place gravel, compact this area here, get some gravel in there, built up to the proper level, get some more sand put in there, and then start placing pavers. Another note I want to mention here is that in this area between this large rock and that birch tree, I made a switch from the uh, SDR 35 sewer and drain PVC pipe to schedule 40 PVC because I do drive the side-by-side, -side, the tractor, and sometimes my truck through here. And I just wanted to make sure that the, we had the strongest pipe available uh, in this area so it doesn't collapse on me. Uh, so hopefully the Hopefully the Schedule 40 PVC will hold up to that weight. And then we just have a daylighting out here in the woods, downhill, nicely. It'll work good. So now I was waiting on a rainstorm to make sure everything works. It should, I did, did a test run last night by spraying water up on the roof. And we should be good to go. Yeah, so we're gonna get some gravel later on today and we'll start putting, we'll get a rent a compactor and get this stuff compacted. And keep working here.
All right, there we go. We got all the material we need for the patio. I'm gonna put 10 inches of gravel down, compact in a couple lifts, put some fabric on it, and then put the manufactured sand down. This is, comes out right off the crusher, and it's a byproduct of crushing rocks. And it's got a lot of fines in it, some small, some bigger stuff, and it's gonna make a good leveling sand for the patio papers. So next step is we're gonna do the, we gotta get a compactor, and then we can hammer out getting the sand down and the gravel down, get it prepped for the patio. I got myself a whacker. From the local Ace Hardware. Today's the day where we start placing gravel. I've got everything excavated, everything planned out. And it's off to getting the gravel in. I didn't know there were rubber pads on the bottom. All right, so I got it off and then realized that this rubber plate was on the bottom and just hadn't seen that like that before on doing dirt compacting. So I called the hardware store and apparently the guy gave me the wrong one. So he just told me to take it off. those three bolts, removed it much faster than running it back up there and getting a different one. So now I can start doing my work. Ready for gravel, we're gonna put 10 inches right here and about five down there. This is where the hot tub's sitting. Got the gravel up to grade. I had to make some changes to my elevations on the landing area here, mainly because over on this side, I wanted to make sure that the pavers met in with the lawn. So I had to bring up the gravel here so that when I bring in my next two inches of sand up and then two inches of pavers, they'll be level with the, the lawn here. So then on this side, I brought up that elevation there made sure that it was level going across. My main goal was that any water that falls up here in front of the steps comes this way down to a low point about where that level's at and then goes downhill that way. I'm probably gonna end up not putting drain tile in along here. I'm just gonna let the water flow off the lawn into this low spot. And then I think I might put a little catch basin in right down there. 
just to catch any rainwater that goes in there. Otherwise up on top here is ready to go, leveled to grade. We're gonna put on that geotextile, geotextile fabric down now over the top and then got our first bucket of sand, manufactured sand, ready to go. All right, I spent a bunch of time leveling this out. Used the six foot level as a straight edge. Another useful tool I found is the landscape rake. We got her done. I didn't record all of the patio placing because it's pretty much one level of sand, two, make sure it's compacted a little bit, three, lay the block down. And that's what I did. Got all of the patios in, patio pavers in here. One thing I did have to work around as well, let me see, I just Took a diamond blade on my four and a half inch dag or uh, angle grinder and cut out a circle in these pieces and it's close enough for the girls I go out with. And then tonight, today I just got the outer boundary done all the way around. And then just got this last piece in here a little bit ago, got it glued in here, got this one level. And that's it for the patio. So I think that does it for this video. Uh, the next video we're gonna work on getting the drainage in for the downspout and finishing that up, finish getting the catch basins installed for the land in the landscaping area. And then we'll start working on getting the edging in in the landscaping, work on the sub panel and possibly the conduit for the yard light and camper plug-in. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to be in the next video, but it's going to be some of those stuff. Some of that stuff you'll for sure see. Until then, make sure you check out this video here below. Uh, YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy it, and we'll see you again.